often if you look at onboarding, it's like, okay, look at their person's onboarding plan. Like day one, spend one hour with the finance director, with the and the chief finance officer. Day two, spend one hour with the chief revenue officer. Right? It, it's not enough to really ensure that those two people are going to work well together. So it's 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 coming up with a way that suits your organization and your style of doing things that those two people are going to work very very well together. Everybody's going to work very well together with that C-suite team, right? If they're, all they're ever doing is getting together for that weekly management meeting where you're standing at the front and they're all presenting their ideas back to you, there's no ability for them to get to know each other, to understand how they can work together. It's all about allowing them to map and understand and to, I guess, devise their place within that system, understand that system and understand the individuals and how they all work so that they can then adapt themselves, adapt to the way that they work to make that system stronger than it was before. And if it's not seen as a system, if it's seen as an individual person just coming in, it's not going to work. That system has to change whenever one part of it changes. And that's the big difference in the C-suite. It's going to have to change if you've got somebody new at that top level, especially in a key role, say something like chief revenue officer or chief financial officer or chief operating officer that sits outside of a discipline, perhaps. You really need to update that system to make sure that person is fully integrated into it. Because if they're not fully integrated into it, it's going to cause friction. Gears are going to grind against each other. It's going to be all these problems that can often seem very, very hard to fathom or to understand or to know what to deal with. And the reality is, is the first two months of that person's engagement, that should be their focus is to understand the system and understand their place within it and how that system needs to change to meet what the business needs and what they need to be successful. How much do you think it's the individual's responsibility to, to, to craft their own onboarding experience versus the investment that the CEO needs to make to ensure that the person is fully integrated? Well, it, it comes back to an agreement again. There's got to be an agreement between both parties that they will, what's my onboarding process going to be like? Yeah. And you as a C-suite leader should go in and, and be able to spot if this onboarding process is not going to work, right? If it's not right, based on what we've talked about here, but almost always based on your instincts, is for you to say, I'm curious, um, why does this onboarding, you know, how does this onboarding process come about? Feedback, right? How could, um, how could I make some, or could I make some suggestions to improve this? So yeah, please do, right? Suddenly you're into a point now where you're writing agreement on that onboarding process. If something doesn't feel right to you as a C-suite executive, especially in that onboarding process, now's the time for you to take ownership of that, right? Nobody's going to ask you if you want that. You've got to take that as well, right? So it's about taking ownership of some of that yourself if it's not being clearly offered by the organization. So again, it's co-authoring it, creating an agreement based upon that, by doing it through by asking very, very simple, straightforward questions rather than saying this, this onboarding process is dreadful. Let's write a new one. It's being more curious about how you can improve this. And then once that's done, you know, you do your best to document that onboarding process because sure enough, somebody else is going to need that later on down the line coming in at your level. And so they're going to be a lot better and a lot more prepared to join the organization as well. So I'm all for co-authoring that and having the courage to go with your instincts to say, this isn't going to work for me and, and co-authoring a different onboarding process at the end. 